So basically we have a perfect case study here where we have two, two separate lots. We've got 510 A and B, two tall skinny houses, and we've got 55112, which is a single family house, little tiny house on this larger lot. Mm -hmm. And the whole trend of this neighborhood is if you just take a pan down this neighborhood, is we've got two tall skinnies, two tall skinnies, junker house, junker house, junker house. So we, in this market, we're not pioneers, right? You don't need to be. The game here is just to take, you know, tying, knowing what your price point needs to be for this, for the single family house, for the small single, and then discovering who who built these throughout the whole neighborhood because that's your buyers list. All right. So step number one is we need to figure out who our buyers list is, and you can do that by simply driving through this neighborhood, writing down the addresses of these houses that have been relatively newly built these look like they're about a year or two old maybe maybe three right mm -hmm. relatively new but not brand new if you take a title uh, get the title data on on these houses you'll see who used to own them and that's probably who built it's probably gonna be an LLC or a company hopefully it's the same company for many and doesn't use multiple LLCs like we do for anonymity mm -hmm. Uh, and so you should, be, you know, maybe you can even Google the name of the company that built these houses, and you'll find out who those owners are. So the first step is to go through a neighborhood like this, because you're you're just going to want to be transacting between. You want to get a contract to buy this mm -hmm. and sell it to the dude that wants to do this, right? Yeah. That's it. That's the game. So you go through a market like this and you comb it, which is literally up and down every fucking street and you're gonna get the addresses of all the new houses. There's no other way to do this. Like I wish there was some like software or something that could go through. There may be searching title records or data records, I don't know. But the best way I know how to do this is drive up down the neighborhoods because you're gonna get to know the neighborhoods. Right. Write down the addresses of the new houses and search those to find out who owns them at your buyer's list. Drive up down the street, find houses like 5112 and that's your seller's list, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna market to your buyer's list and say, hey, listen, um, I have a couple, of, I've got a house coming up in the neighborhood. Would you be interested in buying it? It looks very similar to what you did at 52, 5110. Are you interested in buying? Yeah, I'd be interested in buying, cool. Um, and fill them out. What are you looking for? What would you like to do with it? Um, what, where's your price point at? Because that's your customer, right? Yeah. If I could deliver to you a handful of these small single family houses, how much would you pay for them? So you already know going in what that valuation is going to look like, right? Yeah. So starting with always building your buyer's list. And by the way, Chris, we're going to do the exact same thing with our commercial properties and multifamily properties. There's no different game. This is the game. Then we're going to, once we've got our buyer's list, and frankly, you only need two or three like real qualified buyers. People that are serious about buying, people that have the money to buy, people that have done it before. There you go, that's your people, right? You never want to just have one, but if you got two or three solid people, you're good to go. And now it's your job just to go find a product, right. right? So the next step is getting all these 5112s, knock on their door, give them a call, buy them a cup of coffee, hey, I want to buy the house. That's it, I want to buy the house you already know what they're willing to pay for it, and so you just need to make a, make a negotiation that's gonna divide the spread. Now, when we get into some ninja tricks, which I like ninja tricks a lot, we go to, you know, uh, Granny Martha over here and say, hey, Granny Martha who's lived here for five billion years. Um, maybe she's got a boatload of equity on this house, right? And we say, hey, Granny Martha, what, what do you think about going joint venture? on something like this. Now, this is where we go into ninja tricks, right? Uh -oh. So the first stage is I'll just buy it. So let's say this ha this would produce $800,000 just for our conversation today. Right. And then so we know that this future value would be 800,000. We would subtract what do we subtract first? We pay ourselves first, right? Mm -hmm. Begin with the end in mind. Snapshot transplant. Pay ourselves first. We're going to want to make a how much of a margin? 30, uh, 25. 25, 30. So yeah. take our 800,000. Probably, I might need a calculator. John knows how to do all this math in his mind, but I can't do it that fast. I, like just, I just had lunch and like 100, A little over 170. 20, uh, 20, of 800, of 800? Yeah. yeah. So what's that if you subtract it? Uh, 
630? 6.30, yeah. So we got 6.30 left to build the house, houses, and buy the lots. These are just hypothetical numbers, of course. And let's just say that these houses, we were going to build them for 125 or 150 a square foot. Get out your calculator and, and calculate what that looks like. We already know that these houses are around 1,900 square feet. So run a 125 per square foot times two, and that's going to be our building cost for our two houses. 125 times 1,900 times two. The cool thing about this game is it's it's like it's like uh, there's horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Mm -hmm. and horseshoes, you don't get any points for being close, but hand grenades. <laughs> All you got to be is close. Right. Right? So we got to get close. So 125 per square foot times 1900 times 2. What do you got? Four, uh, 475. 475. So in the, for, all, for this conversation, we have an $800,000 future value minus our 25%, leaving us with 630000 Right? And then the building cost is going to be what? Uh, 475, you said? 475. Building cost. So we got 155K. Yeah. So there's $155,000 in there for, for an old Junker house. All right. All right. These are hypothetical numbers, but we just ran the entire formula for you. Now, the conversation might look like, just because I want 25 or 30% mar margins on these houses, doesn't mean that people don't build them for much cheaper than that all the time. Right. So the, the, the whole key of having that buyer's list first is having that conversation with mm -hmm. them is, how much would you buy this land for? Right. right? I wouldn't pay more than 175 for this piece of shit house that I would tear down and then go through a year and a half worth of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, $175,000 sounds like a lot of money, but that's a lot of risk, a lot of effort, a lot of hassle, a lot of time yeah. for me to make 170 grand. Some people might do all that work for 50 grand for a year and a half worth of work, right? but not me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a 25% margin guy on development. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to make a 25% profit right. if you were that, that builder. Yeah. Because you're going to leverage all this shit, right? So if you went into this, this thing, and, you, and let's just say you put $200,000 for the house, you're going to have $450,000 in construction. We're going to sell it, you know, we got six fifty dollars in the deal. We're going to sell it for eight hundred. dollars That's one hundred fifty dollars minus closing costs and sales costs and marketing costs and holding costs and all that junk, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a little profit margin in there. Yeah. But if you only came in and said, hey, bank, I got 100 grand to put down, and I'm going to do all this work, and when I'm done, I'm going to make 150, what's the return on investment on that? 150, uh, it's uh, 150%, right? Yeah. So if you invested 100 and made 150 on top of your initial investment, it's 150% return on investment. Yeah. So that's okay. a good ROI yeah. for the builder. So what I'm saying is okay. just because you because you create a 25% margin doesn't mean that's the return on investment. Right. If you put no dollars in and made $150,000, what's the return on investment? And now at this stage of the game, let's say that's the case. Let's say old granny says, yeah, I'll pitch in. I'll be a joint venture partner. I'll take 20% of the profits and, I'll, and we'll donate the house. Okay. Right? Not donate where she's going to give it up for free. She's going to take her $2,000 valuation on the house and contribute it to the project like an investor. And then say, when we sell, I'll get my $200,000. So you're just structuring it where she gets paid from the sale, not from the, from the front end, right? Right. She's in it with some risk. So because okay. she's taking some risk, maybe we give her 10 or 20% of the profits on the back end. So, hey, Granny, here's what we could do. I can give you $200,000 cash right now and buy the house, or I'll give you $200,000 when I'm done with the job in a year or a year and a half. And I think I'm gonna make 150 grand, so I'll give you 20% of those profits. That's another 30 grand on top of that. So would you rather have 200 now or 230 a year and a half from now, which one's better for you? Would you normally make 30 grand over the next year and a half anyway? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So these are conversations. Yeah. Some people will be like, yeah, I'm totally in. Some people will be like, yeah, just for the fact that I think it'd be fun to watch this thing get built, mm -hmm. I'm in. Right. And they don't even re require that much profit. Right. I just want to be part of it. I see that happen all the time. I just want to be part of the deal. So that's how this whole structure lays out. But the game of wholesaling is all about, this is your buyer, this is your seller, figuring out what that buyer is willing to pay for the seller. And you're just doing the marketing for them. 
why I don't know every builder is not doing this or every spec developer doesn't do this usually what happens is they get busy because right. what we all do is get fucking busy right. so they build this house and they go across to some other neighborhood and they build that house and they go over to this neighborhood and do that house but if you specialize in a market like this you can dominate this little market right. now I don't know how many houses are in here but I'd suggest there's probably a few hundred houses in what we call the nations here yeah. and you can I mean you're, you'd just be the guy yeah. all the fucking realtors are going to hate you and you need to know that that you will, they will despise you and hate your fucking guts. Right. Because you're going to take all their business from them. That's what happens when you're on top. Mm. You can't make omelets without cracking some eggs, right? <laughs> so I'm not saying you're going to do anything negative to next realtors. They're just going to be like, oh, dude, this guy's in here. He doesn't have a license. He's an asshole. He's a man. Nah, nah. He beats us to the market. And they're just going to talk shit about you. But you just need to know that that's going to be part of the game. Because when you kick somebody's ass, all they can do is just talk shit. Right. So you just gotta be a bigger man about it and walk away from it. Hey, whatever. You're you're a realtor for a reason. I'm a fucking. I'm making the money. I'm making because I do the shit. I do the work. Yeah. It's not a hard job. Yeah. So what your next task is gonna be to do is you're gonna drive through this whole entire neighborhood with a map in your hand. If you can get a, a the guy to ride shotgun with you, it's gonna be a lot faster. Or your wife or somebody like that. Hey, ride shotgun. Take notes. Right. <laughs> right? Drive around. And you're literally gonna map the whole neighborhood, and this is why you gotta go down every street so you don't have to double up. You can't get a more clear case study. I've actually never seen such a clear case study right. in my whole entire life, which makes this perfect. market like really interesting. Yeah, perfect. Cool? Yeah, awesome. Boom, man, let's go make some money. Yeah.